Well, good morning, church. It is awesome to be with you today. The title we've been given is the Macedonian Vision. And we, we understand the Bible's very clear that without vision, the people perish. We understand it's very clear from the word of God that unless you have a pure heart, blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. I, I pray that you see God in the message today. Amen. You know, we saw God last night. We saw the vision for world evangelism through our father in the faith. And I pray today you catch the vision. But you can't catch the vision unless you answer the call. So I've entitled today, really, the Macedonian call. Turn to Acts chapter 16. The Macedonian call. Now, 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 now again, I, I just want to remind you, it's, it's the Macedonian call. Not the Macedonian stall. It's not time for you to stall and think about anything. I want you to decide. It, it's not called the Macedonian fall. You know, you, you, you fall down enough, it's time for us in Europe to stand on up and rise up as men and women of God. It's not called the Macedonian brawl. Where you decide to fight the call. Oh. And of course, you will have a challenge in your life because you will not live your destiny. In Acts chapter 16, the Macedonian oh call. Come on, Come on, in verse 6, it says, Paul and his companions traveled through the region of Figra and Galatia, having been kept by the Holy Spirit from preaching the, the word in the province of Asia. When they came to the border of Mysia, they tried to enter Bithynia, but the spirit of Jesus would not allow them to. So they passed by Mysia and went down to Troas during the night. Paul had a vision of a man of Macedonia standing and begging, come over to Macedonia and help us. After Paul had seen the vision, we got ready at once to leave from Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. And the church said, Amen. This is the Macedonian call and vision in one. Amen. I so love this. One could argue that the entire history of the world would be changed had Paul not answered the call. Yeah. The entire history of America and the UK could have been, this is Europe right here. Could have been changed had Paul not answered the call. It was because of persecution. It was because of Christian persecution that the Europeans who had deep convictions on the call of God started America. Amen. One, say, one writer says this. Many of the British North American colonies that eventually formed the United States of America were settled in the 7th century by men and women who in the face of European persecution because of their faith refused to compromise passionately held to their religious convictions and fled Europe and went to start New England, which would be New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Maryland, and they were there to conceive and establish a new plantation of sold-out religion. They didn't say sold out, but I said that right there, amen? <laughs> and so you can argue very clearly that, that, that America was started by those in Europe who were leaving Europe because of the call of God. Amen. The Christian world. The Christian world-conquering vision was started in Europe. Yes. Wow. It was Europeans that started a world-conquering vision. And if you're watching today and you're in this world sector, right. God is calling to a, to a world-conquering vision. Yes. A world-conquering vision. Amen. The Macedonian call. Paul got to his Macedonia. Will you get to yours? Wow. He got there. Will you get there? Will you get to your Macedonia? How'd he get there? Well, it's very clear. It says Paul and his companions traveled. You got to travel. Amen. You got to travel to get to your Macedonia. He travels from place to place to place to place, and then finally he gets to Macedonia. You know, that, 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 that is kind of what life is like. You're just traveling from here. I, I, that's what my life is like. I was traveling here, traveling there. Thought I was going to be an actor. Nope, that's not it. Thought I was supposed to be a businessman. Nope, that's not it. Thought I was supposed to be this. Thought I was supposed to, thought I was supposed to be just all these different things. And then finally I found the kingdom of God Amen. after traveling all around. I finally landed in my Macedonia, the kingdom of God, Europe. 
You gotta travel. So they traveled through the region of figure it, having been kept by the Holy Spirit from preaching the word. Prophet, when they came to the border of Bithia, they tried. You gotta try. Yeah. You gotta try. <laughs> you know, my mom used to say, trying is lying. <laughs> but but I, I tell you, you, you in Europe, you, you gotta try. You cannot give up. I'm so fired up. We got disciples who have not given up on the call of God in Europe. Yeah. You gotta try. You know, it's Winston Churchill who is quoted as saying, success is going from failure to failure without losing enthusiasm. Ooh. Paul traveled from failure to failure right here and didn't lose his enthusiasm. He was relentless. Wow. He tried. Are you trying to find your Macedonia? And then, of course, I love it. It says, uh, during the night, the man of Macedonia, come, come help us. Oh, no, no, no. In verse 7, it says, when they uh, came to the border of Bithynia, Mystic, they tried to enter Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus would not allow them, so they passed by Macedonia. Mm. You know, you got to pass by some things <laughs> if you want to find your Macedonia. Yeah. You got to pass by. Sometimes we don't like being passed by. <laughs> You know, and I, that, that's kind of how I was in life. I was like, I'm just being passed by God until I found the kingdom of God. You got to be willing to be passed by and you got to pass by stuff. You got to pass by stuff because we see from here, God guides your starts and God guides your stops. So if he stops you, so God, why, why are you stopping me from my university degree? He's trying to get you to Macedonia. Why are you stopping me? God. Why are you stopping me? I thought I was supposed to be this, this doctor. No, no, no. This story is about a doctor who went into the ministry. Because if you save a physical life and not a spiritual life, what does it matter? You got to pass by some stuff. I thought I was supposed to be an actor. I was like, no, God's like, you need to quit the act, Michael. You're in sin. You're not right with God. You're an impure God. You've been abandoned. You're so insecure. You won't be on TV. No, you need to be in the kingdom of God, Michael. And I had to quit the act. You know, I pray if you're acting. We know what an act is. That, that's kind of where, what they call the Pharisees, those actors out there. I'm so glad we don't have any actors in the kingdom of God. And then what's he say right here? He says, in, he says, we got ready. Of course, we know these are the we passages. Luke joined the mission team. That's why the pronouns challenge. To we. He joined the team. But it says something very powerful. He got ready. You want to land in your master, you better get ready. You got to get ready. You got to get your mind ready. You got to be in the word of God. We got to be the most Bible. We got to be the most biblically sound part of the world, of all world sectors. We got to know our Bible the best. It's the reason why I, I failed and failed and failed and failed, and I'm going to get the ICCM right there, so I'm going to change, guys. Don't worry. I just passed the test, guys. I just passed the test. I'm going to get it done. But I'm not stopping at the master's. I'm going for that doctorate right there. I'm going for that. That's, that's part of my Macedonia. We got to get ready. Are you getting ready to find your Macedonia? Are you getting? And then once you get ready, you got to be relentless. It doesn't say God concluded. It says we concluded. It doesn't say God did it for him. He's got to go do it. No, you got to make the conclusion. You got to make the conclusion. He guides your stops and starts. You, for those in Europe, you, you got to make the conclusion. God has called me in the 21st century to call people into full-time ministry. Yeah. God has called me in the 21st century to, to be in the European world sector. Yeah. These are my friends. These are my family. These are the people that I'll die with. Yeah. These are the people that I will cry with. Yeah. This is my call. This is my Macedonia. Will you find yours? Paul found his Macedonia. Wow. Point number one, you got to have a relentless walk with God to find your Macedonia. <laughs> You got to have a relentless walk with God. Not a walk with God. A relentless walk with God. I mean, he gets stopped over and over and over and over again, and he was just relentless. I mean, listening to Kip preach last night, he's just relentless. He won't give up. It inspires me to never, ever give up. Come on. One of my greatest speakers was Winston Churchill. He said one of his most powerful sermons. One of his, he was known for talking a lot. <laughs> and he comes to his high school and they think, oh, a two-hour speech. He gets up there and he goes, never, never, never quit. Wow. And he sat back down. <laughs> you know, I want to tell you today, wow. never, ever, ever quit. Yeah. Never quit. Yeah. Acts chapter 15. A relentless walk with God. 
Acts chapter 15. We know that he's had the Jerusalem council. He's gone up there and argued with everybody about circumcision. And then God does something quite interesting. In chapter 15, in verse 36, it says sometime later, this is roughly, this is Paul's second missionary journey. Uh, it's about 50 AD. Okay, so it's about three years before uh, some things happened earlier. Uh, and it says, it says, um, it says sometime later, Paul and, uh, said to Barnabas, let's go back and visit the brothers in all the towns where we preach the word of the Lord and see how they are doing. Barnabas wanted to take John, so he called, uh, also called Mark with him. But Paul didn't think it wise to take him because he had deserted them in Pamphylia, had not continued with them in the work. Wow. They had such a sharp disagreement, they parted company. Barnabas took Mark and sailed for Cyprus. Of course, Barnabas was from Cyprus, so he goes back home. Mark was his, his cousin, so he takes his cousin, he goes back home. Sailed for Cyprus, but Paul chose Silas, another commended prophet. You can read about him in chapter 15. I don't have enough time. I've got to let my wife come up and preach in a few minutes. But he was a cranking dude. So Paul chose cranking guys who were relentless. He chose Silas right there because of his relentless walk with God. He chose Silas, and then he gets Silas, and it, they left commended by the brothers to the grace of the Lord. He went through Caesarea, Cecilia, strengthening the churches. The word strengthening is, where, is, is the, the Greek word. You can look it up and I don't have time. But the Greek word is where we get the English word steroids. Steroids. Central leadership puts the church on steroids. Wow. It just, just mm, we are, we are, we are one relentless family. We will overcome the chains of racism. Right. COVID nineteen. This we can't be stopped. Right. When we have a central God who's we're worshiping, we got a leader who's willing to die for the cause, and we have disciples with relentless walks with God wow. on steroids. Wow. Yeah. wow. The Roman military was known for military inspections. Of course, the American military and the British military is known for inspections. A few things that the military sergeant would inspect of the soldier. The first thing would be whether they had an ID card. Do you know who you are? Whether they had earplugs to cancel out all the garbage. Whether they had on their body armor. Whether they had their first aid pouch, their prayer life. <laughs> Whether they had their weapon and they understood the pistol grip. Whether they had their shot records to highlight all those casualties and remind them of who they were. Whether they knew who their squad leader, their platoon sergeant, and their first sergeant was. And most importantly, whether they had their mission brief. What are you called to do? Paul had to go back. And strengthen because you got to inspect what you expect. Mm -hmm. That's why he went back. He had to inspect what he wanted, to, what he expected. He had to do some, some dare we say, some follow up. Yeah. He had to do some follow up. You know, earlier they got divine assistance sent on by the Holy Spirit. Now, later on, Paul gets divine resistance. He's like, okay, we're going to stop you right here. Uh, but what's interesting here is, you know, these commentators, they, they kill me. They're, oh, you know, uh, Barnabas, they're just two different mission people. No, it isn't. no it's very clear who, 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 who was commended. Barnabas pretty much disappears from scripture after this. You don't hear about him very much. In fact, you don't hear about him really. I think maybe 1 Corinthians 1 mentioned, right? He says, well, Mark joined. Yeah, Mark joined 10 years later. 10 years later. Well, Barnabas strengthened him. Yeah, he did. But the truth of what Paul said, Mark, you quit. You're not ready to plant a church. You're not ready for the mission. That truth sat in Mark's heart, had to sit there for 10 years until he was ready. So it wasn't just Barnabas' encouragement. Paul's relentless walk with God said, you got to have a walk with God. You're going to walk with me, brother. And that truth sat in his heart for a long time. And then he finally took 10 years wow. for John Mark to get that pride out of there. Wow. So he could have a relentless walk with God and wow. walk with a man of God who was relentless. Woo. Are you with me here, church? Yeah. Barnabas tanks on him. Paul kept going because of his relentless walk with God. His relentless walk with God a good friend. And Paul kept going because of his relentless walk with God. You got to remember that Paul wrote to Galatians before the Jerusalem council in Acts chapter 15. The church in Galatia was there before this moment. And we know what happened in Galatians chapter two In Galatians two, verse three through five, Peter got led astray and Barnabas got led astray. Yeah. They stopped being relentless. And it was Paul, the apostle who approached him and said, Hey guys, don't you back off. Come on. Don't you back off from total commitment. Come on. So Paul probably saw some things in Barnabas' heart way back then before he got to this point. Mm -hmm. 
So, bro, you don't have a relentless walk with God. You're focused a little bit too much on relationship. I'm focused on the mission that God has called us to change the world. Amen. You know, you can change the mission team, but you can never change the dream. Never change the dream. Paul says, okay, it looks like we got to change the mission team. That's fine. Wow. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. That'll hit your walk with God. <laughs> yeah. But it never changes the dream. Wow. To evangelize the nations in this generation. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm so fired up. We've got some unbelievable, relentless disciples mm. that really want to go on mission teams, yeah. that want to plant churches, that want to find their Macedonia. Yeah. But let me tell you something. The only way you'll get to Macedonia is with a relentless walk with God. I love you. I'm going to give my wife a chance to share. To God be all the glory. Wow. Mike is sweating. The Holy Spirit is, uh, is on fire this morning. And I hope you are on fire, my sisters. Are you on fire? I'm on fire this morning because I have had a great prayer. And the Spirit wants us to catch the vision, the dream of Macedonia. I love that the, the, the dream of God for Europe came through a woman. Right. Yeah. This is so powerful as yeah. sisters. Whenever you ever doubt God can use you, check out Lydia's story in Acts 16. Let's pick it up really quick in verse 11. From Troas, this is Paul and Luke, we put out to sea and sailed straight from Samothrace, and the next day we went to Neapolis. From there we arrived. I mean, from there we traveled to Philippi, a Roman colony, and the leading city of that district of Macedonia, and we stayed there several days. On the Sabbath, we went outside the city gate to the river where we expected to find a place of prayer. We sat down and began to speak to who? There weren't any men around, there were women. Come on, sisters. Faithful sisters were there by the river praying. Come on, I love it. And they spoke to them. They didn't go, oh, you're just women. We're the men in this world. No, girl, come here. Let's talk. Let me fill you with God's vision and dreams for your life. And they did. And they spoke. One of them, one of them listening was a woman from the city of Thyatira named Lydia. She was a sharp woman. She was a dealer. She was a businesswoman. Dealer in purple cloth. She was a worshiper of God. The biggest thing about Lydia was she was a worshiper of God. She was not a Jew but she had been a convert. And that in a city where it was worldly, this woman chose to love God despite her culture and despite what was her fame and fortune. She still was a humble, teachable woman. The Lord opened her heart. Why? Because she was praying. To respond to Paul's message, when she and the members of her household were baptized, she invited us to her home. If you consider me a believer in the Lord, she said, come and stay at my house, and she persuaded us. Oh. Powerful. This woman is a woman of noble character. And I want to instill in you today, sisters, in order to catch the Macedonian vision, we need to become fierce, noble women. Amen. And I'm going to break it down. I'm going to break it down very quickly and very simply how you can become a fierce woman of God. First and foremost, I want to help you. I want to tell you. I want to teach you what God says about you. Proverbs 31.10, we can dismiss that as a domestic woman. Uh-uh. Proverbs 31.10 says she was a noble woman. Another translation of noble in Hebrew is the word eshit shayil, which means valor. Okay, it's the same word to describe Gideon when he was scared and God says, get up, you're a, you're a, a, you're a, 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 you're a warrior. You're a mighty warrior, okay? The Proverbs 31 Chan is not a woman that just does the cleaning and the chores and, and, and takes care of her husband. She is a valiant warrior. And this mindset of valiant is the mindset that I want you all to embrace in the European world sector. If we're going to get 100 for the Lord this year and multiply into all nations in Europe. Fierce. Number one, faithful in prayer and worship. The biggest thing I see about Lydia is she was faithful in prayer and worship. Wow. This, was any, this was just like any other day in her life. Wow. Any other day. Have you had those days? This morning, yesterday. I mean, this morning's different. This is like, well, yeah, this is like GLC, Jubilee. Maybe you got up yeah. a little earlier to have a quiet time. But what about Monday, when Monday comes around? Every other day, are you going to be by the river praying? Are you going to be faithful 
in prayer and worship to meet your God and to meet the challenges and to hear the call of God. I want to inspire you in Genesis 3, 8, something I learned this week. I was so inspired by this simple concept. And it just says, the man and woman, again, woman, not just the man. I'm not adding woman just to make you feel good. The man and woman. The man and woman, verse 8 in Genesis 3, heard the sound of the Lord as he was walking in the cool of the day. This is powerful. God is walking in the cool of the day. Every morning, you have an opportunity to bump into God in the cool of the day. That is amazing. That is incredible. We meet with God in prayer. And when, not at night, not in the middle of the day, in the cool of the day, in the earliest morning, as our hearts are soft in the morning, God's heart is open to us. He wants us to connect with the supernatural, with the extraordinary, with the sublime. Sublime means beauty and glory. I want that in my life. Do you want that in your life? Be faithful with that every other day moment, not in the special times. Be fa- Faithfulness is being faithful when it's hard, when you don't feel like it, when it's raining outside, when you just had a fight, when the baby didn't sleep last night. Be faithful in prayer and worship and meet God. He's waiting. He's outside in the cool of the day. That inspires me. I hope it inspires you to be fierce, faithful woman of prayer and worship. Number two, fierce. F, we did the F. We did the, now we're going to do the I, inspirational influence. This is her. Lydia was an incredible woman. She inspired, she was, she was inspired by her relationship with God and she inspired those around her. It says she doesn't say anything about a male authority in her life. She was by the river, there were no men in the synagogue, otherwise there would have been a synagogue. Right. The reason why they were in a place of worship which was by the river was because there was no synagogue, there wasn't Amen. 10 Jewish men to make up a synagogue. Don't wait for a man and don't wait for even a leader to tell you what to do, to influence you. Influence starts from within. The word inspire means to breathe life into. Okay, you need to, God wants to breathe life into you, sister. You got to meet with him in the morning, as I said. And from that vantage point, you can inspire. You will will inspire and influence. She was a, a successful woman. So she led a business, but she also led a whole household large enough to allow men to stay with her, Silas, Timothy, and Paul, Silas and Paul, and then the others that were jailed. Later you see that. Are you influencing others? Leadership is about influence, and we teach very strongly in the London church. To be fierce women, we need to be inspired in our prayer and worship, and we need to use our lives to inspire and influence those around us. Lilia worked hard. She had integrity. And she therefore rose to a place of influence. Influence just doesn't happen. We're not influenced. We don't follow even people on social media that haven't, doesn't have anything happening in their lives. Right. They make it happen, right? Don't wait for someone to influence you or inspire you. My inspiration comes from within. Someone asked me, what's my why? I'm like, I want to be the best I can be. Like, like, I'm not going down. Like, I'm not going down easy. I'm going to make it a fight. I want to inspire women. I'm going to hit 50 this year. Guess what? I got my goal three years ago. I said, I'm going to be in the best shape of my life. I'm hitting 50. My glory day is just a beginning. Amen? Age is a number. And I want to inspire you guys. This fierce mindset is going to help you in every area of your life. Our glory days have just begun. Your glory days, if you're feeling like God can't use you, Decide today to be a fierce woman of God. My glory day start today. Amen? Amen. The next thing I want to talk about, it's extraordinary humility and, and obedience. What is so interesting and what is so inspiring is that she was a woman of influence. She was a well-to-do woman, yet she had a heart of deep humility, extraordinary humility and obedience. And I just want to say to you, sisters, is there any in your area, any area in your life that you're compromising obedience? Mm. Obedience is something very simple, but we overthink it. And I think many of us have gotten in the habit of yeah. overthinking obedience. And therefore, yeah. when we're told to do something, we actually think we can do it better, so we try and do it our way. Wow. That is not humility yeah. or obedience. Yeah. Wow. It's so interesting. I'm, a lot of women, um, I'm coaching at the moment, trying to lose some weight. I put a very simple diet plan for them, just one week. I said, do this for 100% for one week. Most of, the, of you fell away. One of you did it and lost 
uh, almost two kilos wow. in two days. And wow. she goes, you know what the issue was? I've been trying to lose weight for, for since I had my first baby eight months ago. I just obeyed and God blessed it. Others are like, well, do we have to do that? Oh, can I substitute that? We're always looking for compromise. That's an issue of character. It's an issue of character. Don't allow compromisation in your life. Just don't. Don't overthink. Someone says, do this, just do it. Just do it. Michael talked about Paul. He didn't overthink the Macedonia call. He obeyed. He obeyed. Lydia obeyed. She, she heard the message. She got baptized and made Jesus Lord. Amen. Let's be obedient and humble women. Are relentless. We need to be relentless. Michael talked a lot about that. I want to give you a nugget really quick. It says that in verse 15 that Lydia persuaded Paul. Lydia persuaded Paul to stay with her. A woman got Paul, the missionary, what it, arguably the greatest missionary on earth, to change his mind. Powerful. The word persuaded, this is powerful, is biazo. It's used two other times. It's a Greek word that means uh, to use power to forcefully seize. This is the relentless spirit, the fierce mindset that we need to have. We remember Luke 16, 16, Paul, who wrote Acts, used it again in his book. He says, since that time, the good news of the kingdom of God is being preached and everyone is what? Forcing their way. Biazo. In order to be relentless, we need the concept of mindset. I spoke to a sister uh, yesterday and I just said to her, listen, don't go into situations on a defensive. Go in on an offensive. We need to get the ball and drive it and lead it and take it home. Don't go into a situation of persecution on the defensive. No, you've got nothing to be ashamed of. Be on the offensive. And that comes by being intense by being relentless and adopting. And this is not a negative word, sisters. You can have it and still be extremely feminine and awesome. The last two, confident. Lydia was a confident woman. I just want to say here, look up Proverbs 21, 28, 1 in the message version. Basically says that honest people are relaxed and confident, bold as lions. The key to confidence is honesty, which is integrity with yourself. Look in the mirror, see where you fall short, get open, get help. Move on. There's grace. Stand wow. in the grace. That's your confidence, sister. Last but not least, indeed, not least, the most important concept, evangelistic. Yeah. Lydia was evangelistic. She was fiercely evangelistic. She said, stay in my home. She was hospitable. And she converted her whole household. And from this one woman's fierce decision, the whole of Europe was changed. Wow. Sisters, if this doesn't inspire you today that God wants to use your one life, your one decision to be fierce, to be relentless, to be faithful, to be inspirational, to be exceptionally humble and obedient, to be confident and confident, I don't know what's going to inspire you. Let's hold each other's arms up and let's evangelize Europe in our generation. I love you very much. Thank you so much, sweetheart. Man, I got blessed by God. I got a better wife than I was supposed to get. <laughs> Turn to Acts chapter 16 as we bring it home. Relentless focus on raising up leaders. You got to have intensity about you. You've ha- you got to be an intense person if you're going to raise up the leaders that are going to change the world. They say showing up is half the battle. That's a lie. Showing up is none of the battle. You don't get nothing from showing up. Just because you're on this Zoom meeting, that doesn't mean anything. Just because you came to the Visions and Dreams, that doesn't mean anything. Just because you showed up, that doesn't mean anything. You know, I, I, I physically train. I don't, I, the first trainer I got, I didn't get that trainer because I, I wanted the, the expected results. I wanted something unexpected from him. Not what everybody else was getting. You know, we turn to Jesus. He's a different kind of trainer. And when you follow a guy like Paul, he's a different kind of leader. He's got a focus. He's got an intensity about him. And you don't walk with Paul unless you want the same religious results you see around the world. You don't do that. You walk with him because you want something new. You want a part of your heart that nobody got to, that Paul got to. Kip got to that for me, and I'll die for Kip. I'll die for the world sector leaders, and I'll die for the vision to evangelize the nation of this generation. He's raising me up still, yet I'm raising you up. We need a relentless focus on raising up leaders in Europe. My wife already made the point. There was an absence of male leadership in Europe. Wow. That was from the scriptures. 
Paul gets there and goes, hey, where are the guys at? They're none. I want to call out all the cowardly brothers that don't want to go into the full-time ministry. Um, repent. <laughs> repent. Stop being a coward. Cowardice rots you from the inside out. I grew up with three younger brothers. I was always the toughest, but there was this one fight. Man, this fight, man, this guy, my brother, my younger brother always got me into fights. And it was always the person that was bigger than me that I had to fight. But he thought I was his older brother, so I had to go fight him. This guy, I did not want to fight this guy. And he was big, and my brother goes, how about I fight his little brother? I go, yeah, that's a good idea. So my little brother fought his little brother and, and won the fight. But it rotted me from the inside out wow. that I did not fight for my brother. Wow. The fact that men don't want to go into the full-time ministry is a lack of love for God. Yeah. I pray that God drives those men away. And that God raises up men that don't want to show up, but that want to show out yes. for God. We need a relentless focus on raising up leaders. Look at Paul. Look at Acts chapter 16 again. It says he came to Derby and Lystra. What happened to Derby and Lystra? He almost got killed there, guys. He went back to the place where he was stoned. He went back to the place. It's been about three years. It was 47 AD when he got stoned. That was Acts chapter 14. Now it's about 50 AD. So three years ago, he, he almost got stoned. He went back to the place of, dare we say, that almost took his life. He was not a quit. I got to lift up Ashley Tenbar. Come on. See, before you get to Macedonia, you may have to go to Lystra and Derby. Paul had to go to Lystra and Derby. Before he got to Macedonia. Remember, Macedonia, that's coming after this. But he went to Lystra Derby, a place where he got beaten up. Wow. You know, I think about Ashley Tambar and how she joined the kingdom of God and faced some of, dare we say, life's greatest challenges wow. in the kingdom. Wow. She didn't lose her faith. She took those lumps. She still went into the ministry. She still gave her heart and got married to an awesome young European man. Yes. They led the Swedish, Swedish church and realized they needed to come back for some more training. Yep. And let me tell you something, they're going back and they're not just going back just to get Sweden going. Casper's got the vision to evangelize all of the Baltics right there. Yes. All of those churches. We're not just going back to Sweden. Sweden, we're coming for you. But we're coming for all of the Baltics. Yes. Takes relentless focus on raising up. Paul, and who does he get? He gets Timothy. He gets Timothy. What's he got to do to Timothy? He's got to circumcise him. He's got to circumcise him. You've read this text. You know what happens. He has to circumcise them. Brothers, that's where we go, right there, right? He gets circumcised. Now, let me give you a little nugget. In uh, Le Leviticus chapter 12, verse 3, it says, on the eighth day, the boy is to be circumcised. Timothy was supposed to be circumcised when he was young. Oh. Paul had to do something that his dad didn't do. Oh. Paul says, boy, you ain't never had a man in your life. Woo. Have a seat. I know that we ain't going to have Luke do the circumcision. I'm going to do the circumcision. Have, have a seat. Timothy was like, man, I I've needed a man in my life. I needed a man in my life. Oh, wow. Timothy wasn't a millennial. Wow. Entitled. Wow. Wow. Timothy was a man of God, a leader. Oh, and he died with Paul. He walked with Paul. That means he was like Paul. Are you willing to be circumcised? Yeah. You know the scriptures. You know Paul just got to arguing against it. And Titus was even there, who was a Gentile. Titus could have been circumcised. But Paul says, nah, he doesn't need it. Timothy, you do. <laughs> If I circumcise Titus, they're going to tell me it's a salvation issue. I'm not messing up the doctrine. But if I don't circumcise you, Timothy, you will not be a relentless leader yeah. that I need. Wow. Yeah. You will not be the guy. Paul says when I get carried out, I need a guy who has the ministry and it should carry on. Come on. And so he grabs Timothy. He raises him on up. He had to go to Derby and Lystra before Macedonia. Where's Derby and Lystra for you? Where are those tough places to go to? What is circumcision for you? Where do you got to get circumcised so you can get to Macedonia? Where do you got to get circumcised so you can be the man of God that God is calling you to be? I love Frankie. I love Frankie. And I love Luke. Why? They're willing to be circumcised. They're willing to allow things cut out of their lives that are not necessarily doctrinal Things where it's a Bible issue, but disputable matters in order for them to have a relentless walk with God and to be relentless leaders. I love Samuel and Naomi. Come on. 
Naomi was blocked, I don't know how many times, trying to come to the UK. Relentless. Relentless. Oh. Naomi raised 10,000 of her own money and spent it for the ministry. Relentless. Oh. Samuel went to France without even knowing how to speak French. Relentless. <laughs> Samuel got sick and gallstones, all kind of crazy stuff. Last GLC, he had kidney problems. I was like, bro, you going to die right there? Like, I don't know, bro. What is God? This and let me tell you something. He was the only one in the remnant group that asked me what it takes to be a leader. And let me tell you something. God is producing one of the most incredible speakers, one of the most incredible leaders. He's willing to be circumcised. He's willing to. I love Frank and Christy. <laughs> Who's Paul in your life? You say, I don't have a Paul. You may not be Timothy. You may not be Timothy. That could be the issue. Say, I don't have a Timothy. You may not be Paul. That may be the issue. You may not be Paul. Uh, let's bring it home for a few points here. Very simple. I love Timothy's mom. I love Timothy's mom. She lets Timothy go on the mission field. She gives up her son. That's powerful. She gives up. He's the only man in the house. Well, the dad's there, but he's not hard line. Remember, he probably opposed Timothy getting circumcised because Timothy wasn't circumcised. Right? And so she gives up the only man that wanted to do great things for God. She sacrificed her son. Timothy's mom is an example. I'm so fired up that we've had some incredible mothers come into the kingdom of God. Yeah. I'll never forget Mama Sue coming to oppose Sean the Baptist being <laughs> baptized. And then, of course, Sean gets baptized and Mama Sue gets yeah. baptized. Yeah. I'm so fired up that our brother Trey got baptized. Yeah. But I'm so mo I'm more fired up that his mother will be baptized. You know, I, I, I am so fired up about when Giles, his mother, got baptized. She left the kingdom. She fell away. But guess what? She just got restored. She's a mom. She came into the kingdom. You know, my brother Raul, one of my best friends, had a relentless pursuit of his dad. He baptized his dad. And just yesterday... His dad passed away. But he had a relentless pursuit. A relentless pursuit. Not only of God, but of raising up leaders. And his dad's in heaven. And of course, I talked to Abishak yesterday and his, his mother, in the next couple of days, she will be baptized. <laughs> Paul meets Timothy, a man called honored by God. That's what Timothy means, honored by God. He was honored, not only in the fact that he met Paul, but that he died with Paul. It's very simple here in Europe. We need leadership. We need men and women that want to go into full-time ministry. I had a great talk with my wife. She said, well, what about everybody else? I said, well, you know, everybody else is going to get a lot of good sermons on a Sunday. This is the globe. This is, this, this, is a, this, is the, this is the moment for those who want to go into the full-time ministry. Yes. The full-time ministry who want to get... Now, let me tell you something. If you're a disciple, you're already in a full-time ministry. You don't get paid by the church. Your job pays it. You're already in a full-time ministry. But I'm talking about those that, that, that want to be raised on up, to be remembered to those who died with their hand frozen to the sword. Yeah, man. Brothers and sisters, we need leaders. We need a plethora of campus students that want to go to Poland, that want to go to Italy, that want to go to Germany, that want to go to Portugal that want to go to Ireland, that want to go to Scotland, that want to go to all the European nations. Yes. You got to be relentless. Yes. You got to be intense. Yes. You got to be focused. Paul was focused. He overcame every obstacle there could be. You know, th th those Jews said, hey, there's three things we don't, don't, don't we, I don't want to be, uh, 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 don't put me around any, any women, don't, don't, don't put me around any Gentiles, and definitely don't put me around any slaves. Who are the first three to get, get Converted to Acts chapter 16. <laughs> I mean, that was a slave, right? He overcame all those hurdles in his heart. I want to challenge you today. I want to challenge you. If you know God is calling you to be a part of a church planting, let me change that. God is calling you to be a part of a church planting. He's calling you to be a part of a church planting. You say, well, I don't want to leave. Be one here. Be one here. Be a missionary in London. It is time for London to have a plethora of baptisms. Yeah. It is time for us to 
baptize everything that moves. Yeah. For us to be known for our baptisms. Yeah, for how many people we baptize. For how many moms get baptized. How many dads get baptized. How many sons get baptized. How many daughters get baptized. The purpose of Bible talk is to baptize people. The purpose of this whole global leadership is to baptize people. The purpose of this sermon is to get you to baptize people. The purpose of everything is just to baptize. It says, you get to Acts chapter 8, it says men and women got baptized. We need baptisms. Yeah. So we need people that are willing to go into the full-time ministry. If you're in the full-time ministry, it's time for you to be Paul. Yeah. It's time for you to be relentless. Yeah. It's time for you to, 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 to grab those individuals in your life, raise them on up. So it could be said in our day, the world was one. All of Europe was evangelized in our generation. I love you, and to God be all the glory. Yeah.